Good morning, everyone. My name is Trevor Gordon. I do the media relations communications with the Canadian Epilepsy Alliance. Uh, today, we are going to do an interview uh, with uh, Celeste Levi's. Uh, Celeste grew up in Timmins, Ontario. Uh, she's a musician. She has actually four albums out that you can uh, be, uh, find on Spotify and Apple Music. Four albums. Uh, she released her first, first album in 2015. She's toured all over Canada. Um, as I mentioned, four albums available on Apple Music and Spotify. Uh, she's also helped out with uh, one of our local epilepsy organizations. So Canadian Epilepsy Alliance has about 25 epilepsy organizations across Canada. Epilepsy Ontario launched an uh, epilepsy shop in uh, November of 2020. Uh, Celeste helped out with an uh, epilepsy awareness, uh, epilepsy shop campaign. She was a model for us. Uh, she uh, helped promote the French collection. So she helped out with that. And she also created a, an epilepsy awareness video that was used across Canada by multiple epilepsy organizations across Canada. So today we're going to talk to Celeste and I'm actually, before we have her join, I just want to, I haven't done this in an interview before, but I want to just play some of her music. This is the song called I Can't Make You Love Me. So let's just have Celeste join us right now. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How does it feel hearing your own music? Oh, geez, it's uh, so fun, I have to say. And that's funny because that's a, a song that I put out quite a few years ago. So it's, it's nice to see uh, how I've grown since then. Because <laughs> actually, this is exciting for me to kind of talk to a musician because I've always wanted to ask that question to a musician. Like, do you ever get used to hearing your song, whether it come on Spotify or you're maybe out and about and a friend plays it or you just hear it organically, does it, do you ever get used to that feeling or do you still take a moment to be like, that's kind of cool? Oh, I definitely take, take the moment for sure. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing, you know, to put out music and especially when it's original music as well and to see that others uh, choose to play it, you know, <laughs> so that's, uh, it's the best feeling in the world. So so, I mean, we're going to talk about what you've, you've helped do with respect to creating epilepsy awareness and epilepsy shop. But I, I do, again, I, I'm excited to talk to you in the sense of your journey with music. So what got you into this? What was your passion for music? How did that all begin? Yeah, it's quite the, quite the story, but I actually, and it, it kind of ties into why I thought it was so important to create awareness. Um, but for, I, I have a Chiari malformation, so a brain uh, malformation that, that's caused uh, many struggles in my life since I was 13 years old. And uh, before that, I had no interest in music at all. And it's only once I had the surgery, once I had to stop sports and all the things that I loved so much prior to, to the surgeries, um, uh, I, I said, you know what, I have to find something else. And I was lucky enough to have had another, to have been able to found, find another passion through a, a talent I didn't know I had. So, uh, and then throughout the years with, uh, with my songs, you know, just, just talking about the struggle and, and not being heard or not, not knowing, well, that it being such a rare disease as well, that, that no one knows about it and always having to find words to explain things uh, through my music, I was able to do that. So I, I try to try to be a voice for those that may not have that that way of expressing themselves. So uh, music has been really important throughout that whole journey. And I hope it, it can, my songs can help those uh, that are struggling. That was, that's a great answer because <laughs> you actually answered like, two of my questions that I had for you, because that was one of the questions I, I thought about was, you know, you don't, you don't have to do this. Right. And, and, and it's just very awesome that a person like you're at your level, a public figure, uh, a celebrity um, is using your platform to help create awareness 
for multiple conditions. And even again, segueing into what you did with Epilepsy Shop or the Canadian Epilepsy Alliance with creating that video. I mean, that video, you created that video about, I don't know, two or three years ago. And, and still to this day, it's getting a lot of interactions, oh. a lot of views. So you're helping create conversations. I'm, why do you think, uh, I mean, why do you think it's important for other public figures, other celebrities to do what you're doing? Well, I've, I've experienced it firsthand. You know, I, I, like I said, you know, I have something that, that's very rare that even doctors and specialists that I've gone to see, they don't even know uh, anything about it. I actually had to go for a, a surgery in Barcelona because here in Canada, we don't have, uh, we don't have that, that knowledge of, of what was going on in my body. So uh, just to, because I, I have to be honest, at first when I was, when, when they reached out to me to talk about epilepsy, I, I felt like, okay, I do, I'm not living with ep epilepsy. I don't know that reality, but I do know what the brain can do to our body and how important it is to, to take care of it and to, to talk about these things for those that don't have the knowledge of what it's about or what, how important it is to talk about it or to support those that, that are living with those struggles. So uh, yeah, it was, it was very important for me to, to, to try because I'm a voice uh, an extra voice that'll talk about it. And I have a different platform. I reach out to others, uh, like to different people that of those that have already done videos or other things. So why not be that extra person to talk about it? It's so important. And on top of it, the fact that I could reach out to a French audience, that was something that was new at the, at the time as well. So I, I, I was very proud to, to have been able to support in, in some way. <laughs> so Actually, that was my next question is how did that all, how did that, you're psychic, by the way. I'm going to add, that, so. I'm gonna add so. that to your LinkedIn, your bio. I want that to be your new thing that you're also, a, you're multi-talented in so many ways, but you're also a psychic. There, I like that. That's, that's the first time I hear that. <laughs> but yeah, the question I, I had is that, like, how did that, that video come to be? Um, did a, like, how, like, how did that video get started? Yes. So it started out with the, the seizure and brain injury uh, center that they have in Timmins. So uh, they had reached out knowing that I had had, uh, you know, problems with, with my brain, <laughs> I guess. So they had reached out to see if I was willing and, and I'm, I'm pretty much always, always down for anything. And it was such a good cause. And uh, I try to, you know, to help out as much as I can again, because I, I understand the, the struggle of getting the word out there. So uh, it was important for me. And I remember when that was posted by both yourself, by King Epilepsy Alliance, by the local epilepsy organization, it did get a lot of traction, a lot of interactions. And I know also for the French, com the French speaking community, they were so happy about that because uh, spoiler alert, people that have, uh, speak French also have <laughs> epilepsy or also have brain conditions or, you know what I mean? So it was like a big deal um, when um, you know, you said you did that video in French and, and yeah. to create that, that conversation. Um, cause not just people, uh, people in Quebec aren't the only ones that speak French. <laughs> people yeah. all over Canada speak French. So to, to, to have you do that video and then to help you also, for you to also create the, the awareness for the, the first ever epilepsy awareness shirt, which I just hearing my, myself say that, that there hasn't been many shirts out there, epilepsy or brain injury related, creating awareness for such a, 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 a an important disease in French. No, no exactly. And it, it's, it's actually quite funny because the, uh, the purple is also the color for what, what I have for Chiari malformation. So right there, I had a connection. I was very proud to wear that that color in for many different reasons, you know, so, uh, but yes, to have someone that represents, you know, either your language or your culture, or per, like for my plus, I'm speaking in French at the same time, but uh, no, yeah, it's so important. And it, it, they're so, uh, it's, it's good to, to show your colors, you know, whether it be on, on your t-shirt or anything. <laughs> so for those that are just joining us, we're having a, a conversation with Celeste. Uh, she's a musician, she has four albums, she's toured all over Canada, she's helped create awareness for epilepsy by shout doing a video shout out, as well as promoting uh, Epilepsy Shop. She was a model for us. Um, <laughs> this is a very informal conversation, so if there's anyone in the chat has a question, please don't hesitate, throw the comment in the chat. I think, uh, I, I don't want to make an assumption, but I think you have a family member uh, watching oh, yes. you right now as well. Oh, of course, of course. My mom, <laughs> my Nick, I knew she'd be there. I sent her a little text before. I said, hey, 
because she's in, still in Timmins. I'm in Ottawa now, so uh, I'll try to connect in it anyway. So you're having a family <laughs> reunion through this interview. So yes, exactly. your daughter's fine. She's doing great. <laughs> uh, um, so your your new album or your most recent album is called "If You Want to Know Everything." Yes. Why the name of that? What made you come up with that title? Yes, yeah, so it's actually an album that was written uh, during the pandemic. So uh, it was it was to invite everyone, you know, to know what's what's really going on in my head. I think I think when we write songs, it's kind of everyone expects it to be, you know, what's going on in, in your your mind, your body, and everything. But uh, I really felt like I had to to write about my different relationships, whether it be with my health, with uh, you know, with the people I love, with the the struggles I face in the music industry, you know, uh, the the relationship with my big dreams that are always the, it seemed too big sometimes, but uh, so it was an invitation for those that want to listen, that want to to hear about it. You know, I always write songs uh, from my personal experiences, but I try to keep it so that others can also make uh, uh, links, you know, with what I'm saying. So uh, that was, it was really important for me to to put that album out. It felt really good. Have you faced any roadblocks or stereotypes or with the condition that you have in the music industry or have you been hesitant sometimes to even share what you have because you're worried that there might be, I don't know, a roadie or some person on a sound stage just like hesitant because of something like Yeah, that's a good, it's a good question. I think uh, I've always struggled with it. Uh, how how much should I talk about it? You know, because it is something that it uh, it affects me every day, every every second of the day. I have chronic pain from uh, from my condition, and uh, it it does. My only moments that I have relief from some of my my pain is when I'm on stage singing, and I think it it must be the adrenaline or the you know the fact that your mind is only concentrated on on one thing, you know. But um, so I, I hesitate always of talking. Okay, because I I live through it every day. Do you, say it again or do you uh I, I know that it's important to talk about it for awareness because i have a lot of people that have reached out uh, because of the uh, the tv show that i had done the voice uh, in quebec you know a lot of people that that uh, would write to me saying i've never met anyone else with it uh, no one knows about this condition so again you just you see how important it is to talk about it then again i'm someone who's very positive and i try to to keep that in my music to keep it on my social media as well so I choose my moments of when to share uh, my health uh, stories, but it, it always feels good at the same time. You know, it's kind of like a big relief when I finally update everyone. Uh, yes, social media looks all great and like everything's perfect, but but there's a struggle that's going on all the time. So uh, that feels good as well. But I think it, it might help people connect even more maybe with my music as well. So um, you've toured across Canada. Um, when's your next uh, concert uh, date? Uh, um, any any big shows coming up that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, we have a we have a couple coming up. We just did one last night here in Ottawa uh, for a private event, and we're we're heading tomorrow to Whitby uh, near Toronto for another show, and we're in Granby, Quebec next week as well. So it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I get to tour with my husband as well, and then my team that I always bring with me. So. Uh, we have a lot of fun together, that's for sure. Who are your favorite artists? Oh, wow. <clears throat> uh, my very favorite is uh, Lenis, Lennon Stella, <laughs> who's an artist that I love a lot, and I'm just waiting for her to put out some new stuff. Uh, so, I, yeah, I really enjoy her music. Uh, I, I really like a lot of different types of music as well, and I think uh, I've been influenced uh, by my husband, who does all, all the all kinds of different styles and he's really opened my eyes to music that I didn't used to listen to as much so uh, I feel like it influences me uh, even though I'm not doing rock music or <laughs> metal music I can still appreciate it I can appreciate the the talent and all the work that's behind it so it, it's fun to, to discover so much new music. Uh, that's great um, I, I want to thank you um, for doing this I know you're a busy busy person but I had to reach out to, to, to request this interview with you because, like I said, it's been, I don't know the exact amount of years, but at least two, if not three years since you created that one epilepsy awareness video, as well as you doing, you know, uh, the promo that you did of being a model for us or a spokesperson <laughs> for us in the sense of the epilepsy shop. Um, but to this day, it still gets tons of traffic, tons of interactions creating conversations 
at least across Canada, if not further out there. <laughs> and um, I, I can't thank you enough for what you're doing for creating epilepsy awareness and, and putting a spotlight also on, on the condition that you have with with this this campaign. I can't thank you enough for, for doing that. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for reaching out, for having this conversation with me. And I, I'm really happy I was able to help in some way. And uh, I'm behind you guys 100%. And I, I really hope that uh, it just keeps growing and that people feel safe uh, with everything that you guys are creating. That's that's the most important part. It's that safe spot. We, we, we would probably reach out to you in March 2025 <laughs> for F less. There we go. Month, so <laughs> put, the, put a circle on that month that we would love to connect with you in March 2025. Sounds great. great. We'll do that. <laughs> All right. Well, anything else that you would like to say as, as we wrap up? Uh, and, and like, I know we talked about your concert dates. Uh, can we put you on the spot to get a spoiler alert about a fifth album potentially? Oh, geez. Yeah. Well, we're, we are uh, writing right now for sure. Uh, so maybe by March 2025, there'll be some new things for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.